Israel lives. Israel lives. Well, since 1949, Washington's provided Israel with more than $120 billion in financial aid. The annual donation is around $3 billion, sometimes more, sometimes less. Friends don't give non-friends that much money. And surely, Washington will never roast Netanyahu over something like this. This is an anti-Israel administration. It's the first administration in American history that is obviously anti-Israel. It's borderline a Jew-hating administration. There, wow. there can be no question at That's this point strong. that the daylight that has been created between the United States and Israel has emboldened Israel's enemies and enemies of the United States. How do you States. say that? I mean, that, that Iron Dome system, Ben, that they are using so effectively in Israel tonight was largely funded in part by the United States, hundreds of millions of dollars under President Barack Obama. Well, the President of the United States still is going to sign over money to Israel because it's politically unpalatable to do so, to not to do so. The truth is, Mr. President, your policy in Israel is unsustainable. The American people are on the side of Israel and Israel's right to defend herself. Mr. President, whose side are you on? Your father was right. We are all Jews. After Jeffrey Leeds and former Secretary of State Colin Powell, in which he acknowledges that Israel has, quote, has, he says, 200 nuclear weapons. Um, and the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty has not been signed by Israel. Um, uh, under U.S. law, the United States should cut off support to Israel because it's a nuclear power that has not signed the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty, according to Colin Powell. Correct? Shouldn't you ask Colin Powell that? I, 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 I'm not going to speak to this particular traffic, and uh, I'm certainly so not going to discuss. Doesn't have nuclear weapons. I'm certainly not going to discuss matters of intelligence from the from the podium. Uh, I'm not. Uh, I have no. I have no comment on that. Okay. Well, the the email says the boys in Tehran know Israel has 200, all we targeted on Tehran, and we have thousands. I mean, that that seems to indicate that, that there's a knowledge of an Israeli nuclear program, which would make U.S. aid to Israel illegal. I, I think I've answered your question. Okay, well, let me, let me ask, um, is that, am I, am I, do I have the correct understanding of U.S. law that, that we, are, we are not allowed to support a nuclear power that has not signed the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty? Look, we obviously support the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty. Uh, I'm, not a, I'm not a legal expert on all the tenets of it, and I'm certainly not going to speak about the, the details that you've revealed here in this email traffic. That would be inappropriate for me to discuss one way or the other. I'm not going to okay. do it. There were sanctions imposed on North Korea in response to their nuclear proliferation. There were sanctions put on Iran in response to allegations of nuclear proliferation. And now we have this email from Colin Powell saying that Israel has 200 nuclear weapons. Why is Israel not facing any, any consequence for this? That's a very colorful way of getting back to the same question you just asked me. Um, but I'm going to refer you back to the transcript when you see it this afternoon to what I said before to your question. Say, so Those who wear the BDS label should be treated exactly as we treat any anti-Semite or bigot. They should be exposed and condemned. The boycotters should be boycotted. If you boycott against Israel, New York will boycott you. If you divert revenues from Israel, New York will divert revenues from you. If you sanction Israel, New York will sanction you. Period. disappointed and these remarks sound like the conspiratorial anti-semitic remarks of, of people that we have heard from over the years and what you said was quote talking about uh, Israel and and quote they're controlling much of our foreign policy they're influencing much of our our domestic policy w what do you mean by that because that sounds to me like a bizarre conspiracy theory. Why would you say something like that when it's just, first of all, patently untrue? Number one, 
I served in Congress for 17 years. I've seen members question bills and votes on how does Israel feel about this. I must have heard that every time there was a significant vote. But Israel through its lobby has manifested so much power over the United States Congress that we're embroiled in wars that I don't believe we should be. Our kids are coming back in body bags. And in the long run, this Israeli lobby is going to hurt Israel. So as soon as you mention Israel, someone claims you're no. an anti-Semite. No, the no, truth no. of the matter no, is, no, no, I'm pro-American, that Sean. Not, and I don't I'm know, I don't too. like, hear me. Hear I'm me. Listening. I don't like what's happening in America today. All right, that's we're, fair. Our kids are coming back in body bags. Wait a minute, but you're and saying we're bankrupt, completely but you're, broke. But you're you're suggesting here that we're fighting wars on behalf of Israel. But you just mentioned the 9/11 attacks. I think not, I think a lot of wait, that wait, has been wait, influenced hear me by Israel. now, Congressman. But our policies in the Middle East have been so one-sided and subjective. Without objectivity, we've created so many enemies, the only way they can strike hey. back is we've imported the terrorists wait from a, those actions. Wait, wait a minute. Wait so a minute. if who, you who, question who, who, it, you're saying no, you're an anti-Semite. that's anti not what you did. That's Whoa. not what you said. You Whoa. said they're controlling our foreign policy, they're controlling our domestic policy. Yes, wait, and wait, I believe they are. Hear me I now. Believe, I believe they control the Senate and the House Foreign oh, Affairs that's, Committee. That's insane. And they're controlling our foreign policy. That's Mike Harris. Is Israel and the United States united, or is Israel serving the long-term interests of the United States in the region? Well, let me correct uh, the, the previous guest, Mr. Millett. Uh, that is, there is no peace in Gaza. Uh, this has been a unmitigated um, war of genocide against innocent men, women, and children in Gaza, and it's time that the world recognize it for what it is. And uh, if if slaughter is the price, and you want to call that stability, then you are uh, truly misguided. As far as the U.S. and Israel being united, the divide between the U.S. and Israel grows every single day, and it's predicated on Israel's bad behavior toward the Palestinians and towards its other neighbors. Israel is not a good global citizen and it never has been it never will be in, in our country here they they practice sedition and they they practice uh, espionage against the u.s on a daily basis and they're just not good global citizens they don't get along with anybody in the past Israel now, directly caused the murder and torture of hundreds of our intelligence agents in eastern europe some spout that Israel's our only friend in the Middle East. A friend doesn't make terrorist attacks against you, doesn't kill your brave young men, doesn't spy on you and betray you. With a friend like that, you don't need any enemies. And the only reason we have enemies in the Middle East at all is because of support for the terrorist state of Israel, which has brutalized the Palestinians and other peoples in the Middle East for over half of a century. It is not in the American interest to support these Jewish terrorists, a small part of the population of the Middle East, and make enemies of nations with the energy resources so vital to America. But I believe that Israel has a powerful stranglehold on the American government. They control both members of the House, the House and the Senate. They have us involved in wars of which we have little or no interest. Our children are coming back in body bags. Our nation is bankrupt over these wars. And if you open your mouth, you get targeted. And if they don't beat you at the poll, they'll put you in prison. I remember what the Israeli Prime Minister said. He said, we're all Israelis now. I agree that terrorism is a problem. And I know who the terrorists are. Dick Cheney told us to expect war for the next generation and drew up a list of 60 target countries. General Wesley Clark informed us of Pentagon plans to go to war against seven countries in five years. Iraq, Sudan, Somalia, Libya, Syria, Lebanon, and Iran. Syria is in process, and only Lebanon and Iran are left standing. But I'm sure their turn will come soon, too. General Wesley Clark called it a policy coup. He said that there had been a policy coup inside the United States. Not even one month ago, the former number two at the State Department, Lawrence Wilkerson, Colin Powell's right-hand man, said that what has happened in the U.S. is worse than a coup. The U.S. media would have you believe that the U.S. is divided. None white versus white, Christian versus Muslim,
The Europeans killed 6 million Jews out of 12 million. But today the Jews rule this world by proxy. They get others to fight and die for them. They invented socialism, communism, human rights and democracy so that persecuting them would appear to be wrong so they may enjoy equal rights with others. With these, they have now gained control of the most powerful countries and they, this tiny community, have become a world power. Israel lives. Israel lives. Well, the United States supports Israel in a variety of ways. We give them all sorts of military and economic support, roughly $3 billion a year. Israel, despite the fact it is a relatively rich country, receives more foreign aid than any other country in the world. We veto resolutions in the United Nations all the time that are critical of Israel. Ceux qui sont contre. 14 voix pour, une voix contre. Le projet de résolution n'est pas adopté par suite du vote négatif d'un membre permanent du Conseil. Those against. Those against. Ceux qui sont contre. And the United States is actually talking about using military force against Iran. Now the question is, why is the United States so deeply concerned about Iran acquiring nuclear weapons? The reason it is that big a deal at this point in time is because of pressure from the lobby. not in the American national interest. A free, prosperous, and secure Israel is in this nation's national interests. The state of Israel was the dream of your ancestors, made a reality by your grandparents and your parents. Every year APAC uh, has a uh, conference where they bring in their supporters from around the country. They meet in Washington, a uh, very powerful group that attempts to uh, affect uh, legislation and uh, other aspects of U.S. policy on the Mideast. And it's uh, sort of a gala affair. There's a Hollywood element where they, they produce these uh, videos that show. They get people all um, um, mobilized and roused. Sort of a pep rally atmosphere. And um, they get an extraordinary number of high officials to come. America and Israel share an unbreakable bond. APAC is one of the reasons why. All of us share a fundamental belief that the freedom and security of Israel are vital interests of the United States of America. We need you now more than ever. It's become like it's a ritual where they have to, the officials have to go to sort of show that they are on APAC's side. You know, half the Congress shows up, 
top administration officials, and they have a keynote speaker every year who is invariably uh, at the very top. From Florida, Bill Nelson. From Nebraska, Ben Nelson. From Illinois, Barack Obama. From Arkansas, Martin Ryan. Can we have a picture first, please? Wait, wait. Sorry, sorry. Sorry. I, blanked, I think I, I might have blanked on that one. From South Carolina, Joe Wilson. From California, Lynn Woolsey. From Oregon, David Wu. From Maryland, Albert Wynn. From Kentucky, John Yarmouth. And I also want to mention former member of Congress, Rob APAC um, does an excellent job of constantly testing the loyalty of people in Congress to their cause. And so there's a constant stream of resolutions that get proposed on the Mideast, um, expressing support for Israel uh, uh, about something it's done, or sympathy with victims of a suicide bombing, um, or condemning Iran or other people in the region who are being hostile to Israel. And these become tests of sort of loyalty of people in Congress on this issue. And those who vote in the way that AIPAC wants will ultimately, will in many ways be rewarded ultimately with, with campaign contributions from people sympathetic to AIPAC. AIPAC itself does not give money, but they sort of, this whole, um, um, series of votes and, and their very careful cataloging of how people vote very much affects where people make decisions about who to give the money to. America and Israel have a special friendship. You have devoted yourselves to strengthening the bonds between the United States and Israel. The United States will stand with Israel now and forever. If a, a politician would rise with this point of view, that the United States should stop supporting uh, Israel, what would be the effect, do you think? He'd lose the next election. I appreciate but we can it. vote you. That's and I'm okay. sorry. But I appreciate, but I appreciate the friendship. Come, if you will come in Italy, I want to introduce you in a member of a parliament, Italian parliament. I would enjoy that very okay. much. Thank sure. you so Thank much. you for everything. Friends owe it to friends to be as candid as possible. So let me say that a precipitous American withdrawal from Iraq would be a disaster for the United States and the entire Middle East. A sudden withdrawal of our coalition would dissipate much of the effort that's gone into fighting the global war on terror and result in chaos and mounting danger. And for the sake of our own security, we will not stand by and let it happen. I would argue that had you not had uh, all of these neoconservatives prominently placed inside the Bush administration uh, that Colin Powell would have never ended up uh, giving that disgraceful uh, presentation in early February 2003 that played such a critical role in turning American public opinion. This is an important day for us all as we review the situation with respect to Iraq and its disarmament obligations under UN Security Council Resolution 1441. Colleagues, every statement I make today is backed up by sources, solid sources. These are not assertions. What we're giving you are facts and conclusions based on solid intelligence. As I show you these images, I will try to capture and explain what they mean, what they indicate to our imagery specialists. Let's look at one. The four that are in red squares represent active chemical munitions bunkers. I wouldn't go to war based on that. That's what I told myself. I would not go to war based on that. There was, most of it could be interpreted different from the way we were presenting it. As these drawings based on their description show, we know what the fermenters look like. We know what the tanks, pumps, compressors, and other parts look like and we know a great deal about the platforms on which they are mounted. Colin Powell, who had poll ratings roughly equivalent with Mother Teresa, had made the presentation and the American people believed Colin Powell. 
If Colin Powell said it was so, then it was so. That made me feel even worse. Um, so yes, I, I have trouble sometimes sleeping at night thinking about my participation in it. 1995, the quantities were vast. Less than a teaspoon of dry anthrax, a little bit about this amount. This is just a little bit amount of a teaspoon. I will make a prediction. If this president orders us to go to war in Iran in the next two years, and he orders any considerable ground component to participate in that, Marines or Army, then I think you're going to see a, another major exodus from the armed forces, general officers, because I think they understand just how colossally wrong such a decision would be and how much that would be the precursor for call it what you will World War three World War four <laughs> remember the Roman Empire for a long long time the state of Judea behaved in ways which annoyed the Romans but didn't do them any harm. At the point at which they were becoming a nuisance, the Romans turned against them, destroyed their temple, wiped them out, and told them, an empire has bigger concerns than you. This is what Israel faces in the next 25 years. The risk that the American empire will say, wait a minute, you don't matter to us so much. Either because we need oil more than we need you, or because oil is no longer important. Doesn't matter, both is the same effect you are more trouble than you are worth and the issue of the holocaust and anti-semitism is declining with the demographic move to the next generation this is a catastrophe for israel because israel has no other friends in the world <laughs> <laughs>